Today we are painting the giant ape and we have a Grick. These are cute little minis. Let's get some focus in for you. Now it's a very simple guide today. Um, you wouldn't want to see one of those in your bathtub, would you? you that wriggling around. <laughs> and this is the Alpha. But we're going to concentrate on the Great Ape to begin with. This is a solid beast um, from WizKids Games. Um, nicely detailed and a simple enough paint. Now it's not just a case of painting the ape black today. Um, we will be giving it a primer coat of black. But what I'm going to be doing is showing you how to highlight the black using um, lighter browns. Just to make the fur pop a little bit more. And we're going to be doing the... Um, grey on the chest muscles um, so we should easily get this one finished within the stream today okay so what I'm gonna do is get some black and get that uh, ape painted up first this, we're using the Vallejo colors um, I do apologize if I say Vallejo wrong now in Spanish um, it would be Vallejo Vallejo with a ho on the end um, but seeing that uh, most of you aren't Spanish um, We'll call it Vileco. <laughs> I lived in Spain for five years. Um, I do speak Spanish. Um, and I was working in all the different restaurants out in Spain. Um, and I worked my way around. I went out on my motorbike. Absolutely fantastic. Oh, I'm using a nice, this is the Monster Brush. This is the Monster Brush by Army Painter. And you can get these from Mighty Lancer Games. Absolutely fantastic for your larger minis. So I'm just going to give this a whole prime um, base coat with this black. And then we can move on to the Grick. And hopefully this black will dry. And I can quickly finish off this great ape on the show today. So we're just going to speed our way through this. Again, if you've got an airbrush, um, it's very simple to just airbrush your miniatures. And this black could be done in a couple of seconds. But we are doing this as a beginner's course. So first of all, we're just adding all this lovely black over the whole of the ape. Let me say hello to people in chat. We got Scorplayer, Umbro, uh, Tulay's in chat, Geralt, uh, the Bull GM. Hello, Bull GM. Um, thank you so much for posting about yourself on our Discord channel. Um, me and you are very, very similar in the way we grew up with miniature painting. Um, and it's really nice to read your little bio that you've posted. It's always nice to know a little bit more about the goblins. Hello, Muses Touch, and Carlos, and of course Mighty Lancer Games is in the house as well. I'm going to call this great ape Alan. <laughs> uh. I mean, going back to the uh, the bold GM, um, you was probably exactly the same. When I back in the eighties, um, I was buying uh, Dragon magazine, but I was also buying White Dwarf from Games Workshop. Um, uh, that was my monthly must-have. I used to have to buy those uh, magazines re religiously every month. This was back when White Dwarf um, used to actually advertise other companies in their magazines. Um, they used to share the love. <laughs> um, until they become a kind of independent company. So I'm just getting this primer coat on nice and ev evenly over the whole of this gorilla. 
comes on a nice little 75mm base. Now the Gorilla does come over the sides of the base, so you could get away with a 100mm base on this one um, if you wanted to bulk it out a little bit. Um, these are D&D uh, &D miniatures. Um, uh, these, this is from the uh, Nolzars uh, range, so these are from the books and the, and the actual games. Now, if you are a huge D and D fan, um, as you know, one of my good friends is Andrew Kaywood. Um, Andrew Kaywood um, has kindly said he would love to join me on my Twitch stream. So, in the future, uh, Andrew will be coming on with my partner uh, Claire or Scorpla, and we'll do a stream all about all the books that he has written. Um, he's All his books have been bestsellers. Um, he's done Kickstarters, they've all been absolutely fantastic. Um, so I'm really looking forward to seeing him on the show. Now he collects uh, Reaper miniatures, but he doesn't paint the miniatures. Um, he likes the pure <laughs> pure pewter he doesn't want them painted so when he comes onto our stream I'm gonna really <laughs> I'm gonna rip him a new one <laughs> um, I've been friends with uh, Andrew Kaywood uh, oh, must be five six years now goodness me I don't know it's been years um, but we've been using his uh, scenarios and his books in all our games. Um, I mean, Scorpla uh, is the one to talk about um, all the D&D games we've used his works in. Um, he, he is a fierce dungeon master. He is a fierce friend. He is um, a, a fantastic guy. Um, and the fact that he's willing to take a little bit of time out of his busy schedule to join us on our on our little channel and say hello because he's he's also a goblin he's also in the goblin army he's a patron he's uh this you know it's amazing i mean he is a huge huge person in that D, &D community uh, so having someone like that supporting you as well is um absolutely a beautiful thing I mean I know Carlos uh, in chat he I know for a fact Carlos would love to have a chat with him so you can ask him all the questions you want uh, when he's here now I've turned my radiator on today so what we can do is we'll get this coat on and then we'll put the uh, gorilla on top of the radiator uh, while we move on to the grick and this will be nice and dry ready for its dry brushing and finishing off it's a very simple paint um, and it can look absolutely fantastic with just minimal effort uh, and that's what I'm showing you today it's just a case of the black we highlight that fur we highlight the skin areas with lighter greys um, we go over the miniature then with a nice black ink wash and we're just about done. It's such an easy paint but looks awesome once it's finished. Now with the uh, fur um, we're kind of pushing the paint more into the miniature because it's harder to paint because of the fur so we're trying to get a nice even coat all over and this brush is fantastic because it's such a large brush um, and it really gets that paint on nice and evenly plus it goes into all the little recesses of the fur um, so on the larger minis using the larger brush 
is fantastic. Um, if you use a smaller brush, not only is it going to take you twice as long to paint, um, it would you'd actually leave little streaks of paint more because of the little size of the brush. So doing it this way is a fantastic way to get your blocking in of the colours, as they call it. And blocking up blocking in other colors is when you put on your primer prime colors all over the miniature and that's what they call it blocking in of colors so when you see someone on Twitter or someone saying today I'm blocking in the colors all that means is they're putting on the main colors over the miniature and my main color today is black But we should get this gorilla definitely finished in today's show and um, it's a it's a nice little paint it's a enjoyable paint um, highly recommended for beginners uh, because you get such a lovely looking finish and for a beginner it will really give you confidence to move on to harder miniatures um, Like I said, we just get this black on. I'm trying to go as fast as I can without making too much of a splodgy mess. Because you, you still want to get that coat on evenly. You don't want to just blodge the paint on. So we're just trying to keep it even. Keep those brush strokes so you can't see any lines on the miniature. Let's go into the eyes there. Going around the mouth. I'm not going to paint inside the mouth, just around it. Let's get this arm finished. Black is also a colour where, while the paint is wet, um, it looks like you've painted everything. But once the paint is dried, because of the reflection of the paint, you'll find that there are places that you'll miss. So if you do that, all you've got to do is it simply go back over with a bit more black paint. I wonder if uh, Gorilla with a brush has got this miniature. Have you got a Tommy? You got an airbrush? Have you? Yeah, um, uh, airbrushes are amazing things. I mean, I only use my airbrush for base coating, uh, but there is so many f amazing things you can do with a, with a, an airbrush. Um, highly recommended but um, I would my personal opinion is paint with normal acrylics uh, for the first couple of years to learn all your paint colors and to learn how to paint with a brush um, and then once you've not mastered but once you've got your confidence in painting your miniatures with a paintbrush then I would move on to getting definitely getting an airbrush f for your future miniatures uh, airbrushes are uh, save you m so much time I mean I would have had this done in like 60 seconds with an airbrush um, but once you get into the airbrush scene it, uh, it's very expensive um, you, you know you, you're buying more paints you're buying more items I mean as a hobbyist it's a fantastic thing by an airbrush and I definitely recommend one to everybody um, if they're really serious in their painting especially if they're doing large armies I mean because you can do all sorts of amazing things with an airbrush to help speed things up 
There we are, so that's most of the paint on there. I'm just making sure it's all nice and even. And then we're going to put this uh, ape on top of my radiator and hopefully this will be all dry and we can quickly finish off this ape before the end of the show. Yeah, that's great. Oh, see, missed a bit, missed a bit. Get in there. There we are, all done. There we are. Okay, let's get you over here. Right, he's on my radiator. Hopefully that will help him dry. We'll give him 10 minutes or so. Yes, the um, for large scenery pieces and terrain airbrush. Wow. Um, I mean, look at the uh, or the WizKids boat. You could paint. I painted that by hand. Um, if I could have painted it with my airbrush and it wouldn't have taken long at all. Okay, let's move on to the Gricks. We're going to give them their base colours. Now the Gricks are going for a nice dark green on the back and we're going for a lighter green on the front. And very simple paint again. Now, my, my little channel is about uh, painting for beginners. Um, so you're not going to find super highly technical things here. Uh, all I'm doing is showing you a simple way to paint your miniatures. Um, there are loads and loads and well hundreds of channels. Um, I just love doing what I'm doing. If I can help people start painting, then my job is done here. <laughs> There's, uh, there's, um, there's lovely beefy smells coming into my room. I feel like the Bisto kid, you know? And I can smell Claire's making a beef, beef casserole or beef stew or something. Um, so I'm really excited to eat that later. So um, I'm moving down now. This is the Regiment Brush by Army Painter. And this is a, quite a large brush, but uh, very simple for what we need to do. And all we're doing is going over the back of. And as you can see on this one, it's got a nice little line going through the body. So you've actually got something to follow. So we're just going to go across and follow that line. And again, this is a very simple miniature where all we're doing is once we've done the two prime colours, we just dry brush over these prime colours. And you've got yourself a nice little mini for your Dungeons and Dragons games. I'm looking forward to finishing that gorilla. That's going to be a nice little centerpiece miniature, that one. Um, I do love painting the medium-sized miniatures, the monsters. Monsters are my favourite. Um, human miniatures are very, very nice. Um, but the monster miniatures is what I love the most. Um, because you can really go to town. You know, you can make absolutely beautiful bases for them. Um, it's, there's more of the miniature to paint. It just looks... It's just me. Um, some people prefer painting the human sized miniatures but monster miniatures for me are nice I like that but to my favorite human sized miniatures are townsfolk and some people will be like oh townsfolk are boring but I absolutely I love townsfolk miniatures um, uh, so I'm looking forward to doing the uh, King's Castle um, miniatures from WizKids I got a whole set of the court from the castle um, so that's going to be great fun. So I'll probably do a show um, where we can paint that whole box set together. Um, and that'll be awesome. Absolutely fantastic fun. We'll give them the old 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 style 
painting clothes and that would be really good fun. Hello Dover Cook, how are you? What we're going to do with the screen is we're going to go up over the jaws on the back as well. Just to finish off the back. This one. And this one. Lovely. So that's our green for the back there. Right? And we'll do the same with the little baby one. But this time I will change my brush to something a little smaller. So again we're going to the back, just adding that dark green to the back of the Grick. I don't think I've ever encountered a Grick in any games, I can't remember. I've played in quite a few D&D games now. Um, another thing I've never encountered is a dragon. Um, never, never encountered a dragon in any of my games which is quite disappointing. Um, a dragon would be nice. Nice and simply, just going over all the areas on the back of the Grick, and again along the back of his jaws, or I, I wouldn't know what they call these little things, little mouthpieces. And just nice and quick and easy. Just getting the colours on. Now remember, we all make mistakes painting. If you make a mistake, just go over it again. Um, it's, it's, not, it's not a problem. Not a problem at all. Just enjoy what you're doing and have some fun. There we are. That's a little black bit on. Okay. Let me just double check on our gorilla. See how he's getting on. 
is a little bit tacky. So what we'll do, we'll do the tummy of this one. And again, we'll go back to the larger brush. Let's see if we can pick you up. I'll just sip some of my coffee and see what's been going on in chat. You know, the dragon has a boss fight to overcook. Awesome stuff. Um, I think um, what it is with the dragons is um, you've really got to be quite a high level in Dungeons and Dragons. Um, they say if you're going to face off with a dragon, you've got to be, was it level, over level 10 or 15 or something? Hmm. So, how, how did you, how did, how did the party uh, get on with fighting the dragon, uh, Dovercook? They all died. <laughs> yes, dragons are like uh, end game content, really, aren't they? See, this is a nice lighter green. I mean, this is we're just going along the belly. And we can go along the bottom there. Now, for the bases on these miniatures, I will, I will be going over um, with PVA and gravel. But I've got a little tip to show you today. Um, and it was just by accident I found out about it um, playing around with my bases. So I'm going to show you all a little trick I use for my bases in a minute and it's fantastic um, it's very simple to use um, and a great way to fill up your bases um, in the areas that uh, is very difficult to add sand to some parts because uh, I've noticed with these Whiskey, Whiskey's minis if you look here you haven't got much room on the base to add your sand um, so there's a very simple way to fill up that without using sand and it'll look really good so I'll show you that in a minute okay so we're just getting that color on here doesn't take long the, uh, the the blocking in of colors um, in my opinion is the part that takes the longest it can be the most tedious um, especially if you've got a whole army of miniatures to paint and just going over the claws at the front as well here do a little beak a little beakiness there we are So, wash my brush. Just going to take the other brush, and I've seen some little bits I missed, so I'm just going to go over those. Nice, quick, and easy. Okay. So, there's our two colours onto our Grick. Just a little bit there I missed as well. Good. Okay. Wash my brush. Go back to the other little Grick. Um, what, what I'll do is I'll paint the belly on the baby Grick. And then I'll show you that little base that I was telling you about. Um, so again, again, we're going back into here. And we're just adding that lighter green going down the belly. And we'll do his little beak. There we go. 
and just finish up there lovely a little bit there and a little tail and just going around the back there we are so simple with well, his basic colors on wash the brush Oh, you used the young black dragon. Nice. I got a, I got a couple of uh, young, uh, young black dragons to paint. Um, I've got uh, bronze dragon. Um, got the black dragon, copper dragon. Mm. I do like the dragons. Everybody loves dragons, but they don't like fighting them. <laughs> That's for sure. Okay, let me show you this little, little trick I found out with the base, um, and that's using my plastic putty. Now, Renegade Shank has been supplying me in this putty and keeps sending me this putty, which is absolutely amazing stuff. I used to use liquid green stuff or the two part epoxy resin. Um, mm -hmm. um, but this is fantastic because it comes in a nice squeezable tub, a little tube. Now, as you can see, normally I would add, normally I would add some sand to the spaces but when you've got um, a little base like this the sand can peel up once you've added it with PVA glue but if you use this stuff you just squirt it let me see if I can get a grip first you just squirt it around to the edge of the base and you can actually bulk up a nice little base to match into the rock work and this this uh, this plastic putty will go rock hard and, and you can paint over it like plastic um, and it's just a great way of filling up your base um, and making it look like the original base and see so just built, built bulking it up and once that is dried you can paint it to exactly the same color uh, and it's just a great way to get to the edges where if you use PVA glue and sand um, you've got more chance of that chipping away or coming away from the base so when you've only got a small little lip to add some extra basin material um, this um, this this putty just fills in those gaps perfectly and gives you a nice texture to the base um, I think it just looks absolutely fantastic once it's dry and it's a lot stronger than having sand um, on the small areas so on small little minis like this, this is a fantastic way just to add some texture to your base. And once that's dry, it's a simple fix and it's simple to just paint over and you've got yourself a beautiful little base all finished. Now for the larger Grick, that's not a problem. As you can see, there's lots of space, lots of space around the base there. So I can add PVA glue and I can add all my gravel and you've got less chance of that peeling away from the base. Hi Gareth, how are you? Having a nice Sunday? You got loads of yummy food ready to eat? I think um, Claire's also making uh, jam tarts today as well. We've got um, our plums and our plums and our pear tree. So, um, pokey stick! I haven't even used the pokey stick. <laughs> um, so I think she's making tarts today, like a puff pastry tarts. Alright, let's have a look. How are you? He's a tiny bit tacky, but we're going to go ahead anyway, because otherwise the show will have ended and I wouldn't have shown you anything. Okay, so what we're going to do first is we're going to add some lighter dark, dark gray to all the skin areas of this miniature. So we've got our black on there. I we'll actually need to add a little bit more. So we're going for a very dark colour. So we just add a bit more black. Come on, let me come. There you go. And we've got some nice white. Oh, I love pancakes. Pancakes. A little bit of white there. Now, 
we are going for um, a large dry brush um, and I'm just going to add some black to the pad, my little tissue here let's get it in focus there and just a tiny bit of white we want it a very dark dark grey to start off with and um, a little bit more white there we are just making it nice and dark and then we're going to take that off I'm going straight over all the chest muscles and all the areas where it's just flesh and this is just to begin with and we're just going to the highest areas building up that lovely flesh tone of the of the ape going over where the eyes are and the nose and the mouth and on the hands all the areas where it's no fur just the flesh and around the toes little gorilla toes little gorilla toes there you go back onto the chest Okay. Very, very simple to do this, but it looks fantastic when it's done. So that's your first little dry brush on there. And as you can see, it's given an, already given a little tone to the skin. So what we're going to do now is add a little bit more white. So we're going to slowly start building up the colors on that chest and very very slightly just a little bit less this time we just get a nice little highlight going a little bit more white add it into there taking it off and again top of the nose around the eyes and all the highest areas of his little fingers and just over the chest on his toes there we are. and now we're going again back into the white adding it to the gray and we're going lighter again we're doing this in little very slight enhancements as I call it of white Add into the black making the gray just lighter and then we're just going lighter and lighter onto the chest and again on the other chest and over here over the top there we are just on the cheekbones there well it's nice to get them shined up And going around the bottom the jaw and again chest what you're looking for is this part of the miniature is what you're looking for when you see the miniature you want this bit to stand out the most so this is where we got the lightest part just going around fast and simple we're just picking out the highest areas now There we are, I like that, that's nice. Yes, that's nice. Mm. There we are, so that's the face on the hands. Looks fantastic. Now, that's simple enough. I'm not gonna go any further on there. What I'm gonna do now is go straight onto the fur. Now for the fur, we are going brown on black. So what I've got here is flat brown. And I am going to make this even darker. So I'm going to add some black to this brown on my tissue. There you go, come on out. It's coming out in bubbles. It's coming out in bubbles. <laughs> bubbly bubbly. <laughs> right, let's make sure this is dry. Drink some coffee. Ah, 
Hi, <laughs> hi, Shank. I hope you hope you're well. And a phoenix gorilla. Might as well just set it alight. <laughs> okay, right. So let's get some black back on our palette there, on our little tissue. So I've got some nice black there. Now I'm going to start adding some of this lovely brown into that black. So we've got a nice dark brown going. And this is all just to highlight all the fur areas. So now I'm going over all the fur just with that brown. And this will pick out all the areas on the top. What will happen then is this brown will make the black stand out below the fur. Um, and it will give you a lovely little effect. I'm just going over all the fur. Very, very simple. And we just blend that in to the chest, just around the chest there. And definitely we'll get some on the top of the head. This will be great. There you go. Right, I need some more brown. One second. Well, that's better. The brown didn't want to come out. There you go. Now we've got some decent colour going. There we are. Just add that into our black again. Just some darken it off. And we can start going over all the fur areas. Now, what we're going to do is just go over all the black and then we're going to highlight the brown with a little bit of white just to lighten it up and then we'll go over the highest areas of the fur Right, now I am going to add a tiny weeny little bit of white into that brown. Just to this, now I'm take this off and it'll be very, very small going over the highest areas, like on the top of the fur here. Just on the arm here. And here. Just certain areas in the highest points of the miniature. And on the thigh, just a little lighter colour on the fur. Ah, it really makes the fur stand out and look amazing. Mm. There you go. And just top of the belly there. You've had too many cookies. You've eaten too many cookies as you have. Mm. Right, let's do his shoulders. A bit more white, a bit more brown, just to make a bit more mix on the palette here, and a little tissue. And again, we go back over the highest places, like on the shoulders. There we are, over his bum. Gorilla's got a big bum. And there we are, that's all our fur highlighted. Absolutely fantastic. Right, so let's get the mouth and the eyes done. What are we doing for time? Yeah, we got time, we got time. Okay, now for the mouth, uh, for his little tongue, I'm using some vermilion red. Now, 
Now, that vermilion red is very, very bright. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take a little bit and add a dab, a little tiny bit of black. Just to darken it off, just a little. Not a lot. But just to darken that red down a little bit more. There we are, that's nice. That's nice. So we've just darkened that red down a little bit. And we're just going to go through the whole mouth, top of the mouth, and his tongue with the same colour. That's his mouth all painted in, very simple. So let's do his eyes. Now, as you can see, the gorilla's eyes are already black. So all we're going to do is add two little dots of white to each eye. We don't need to paint them in. All we need to do is add two little dots of white to give that reflection from the eyes. And we'll also paint our teeth in with the white as well. white I think we've already got white on our palette yes we have now I shall go for we have got the insane detail brush by army painter uh, remember if you become my patron and join the goblin army you get 10% off all products and miniatures from mighty Lancer games um, and that's available to all patrons on any tier you want to be on that means you can join my patron for one dollar and you'll get 10% off every single item in their shop. I mean, you can't ask for better than that. Okay, so a tiny little bit of white. All I'm going to do is go straight into the eye and add the tiniest of dots. And that one's done. And that one's done too. So all we've done is added two little white dots to those black eyes. And what that does is it gives that reflection look in the pupil of the eye. You don't need to paint anything else because Gorilla's eyes are all dark anyway. So what we're going to do now is the teeth. Again, using the same brush, I just go over all the teeth. I'm not painting them individually. I'm going to use my ink wash cheat. <laughs> I call it the ink wash cheat. What it is, it's just a simple way of getting teeth done without taking hours and hours doing each little one individual. So we just go over the whole teeth of the colour we want. Now I'm using white. Um, you can use an off-white if you want the teeth to look more older. But what I find is if you are going to use a brown ink wash over the teeth anyway, you're going to have that instant old look. teeth there just try and pick those out there we are. so those that's his teeth done now I'll give that I'll let that dry for a couple of seconds and then we can finish off that gorilla brush his teeth <laughs> Okay, what I'll do is I'll add that uh, red to these little bricks. Again, I'm going to make a little darker mix because that red is a little bit too bright. And I'll just go and add to the mouth. So as you can see with the gorilla, 
you can easily get that painted up to a nice nice tabletop standard within within an hour for your tabletop games <laughs> yes thank you it is the bold GM it's um it's called using your head <laughs> Okay, so we're just finishing off this mouth here. Let's add in the darker red inside. I have to say I've been, um, enjoyed painting this stream. That, um, that gorilla, I, I, I do like animals. Um, animals are um, one of my favorite things to paint. Apart from rocks, I'm a bit of a stickler for painting rocks, which sounds boring, but I, I do like painting rocks. <laughs> um, but animals, little piggies, I love piggies. Piggies are my favourite animals. Um, I wanted to get a dwarf piggy for the house, a real one. Uh, but Claire said no, little dwarf piggy running around the house. I, I mean, you can get guinea pigs little guinea pigs but they're a little bit too small because I know my cats would eat them <laughs> but <laughs> um, I don't know I honestly don't let's get this gorilla finished off right I'm gonna use some Agrax earth shade and that will be for inside the mouth and the teeth um, so I'm just give that a little mix up I'm going to use Scottish Andy's little holdy tool because um, you never know when your ink wash is, is going to spill. Um, and all we're going to do for the ink wash is I am going to use uh, I'm going to use the masterclass brush just to add it because it's quite a small area. So we'll get this over here, get it in focus, and I am going inside the mouth and around the teeth with the ink wash what happens see is when we add that ink wash um, the ink wash will go into all the recesses of the teeth and will give all the all the teeth will become individual um, so what you've done is saved yourself loads of time and again at the bottom and as you can see all the teeth have now popped out into individual teeth of our gorilla absolutely fantastic okay let's add some more ink wash to the back of the mouth just to darken it off um, like I say on the top of the roof roof of the mouth beautiful right the last little item we're going to do to this gorilla just to finish him off is I'm going back into that white let me just find a tissue Going back into that white just to pick off the tips of the teeth. Um, only on a couple, only on the largest, the canines as you call it. So we'll go back to the tiny little brush and just on the ends of the gorilla's teeth here, I'm just gonna touch a tiny bit of white. Absolutely fantastic. There you go. And there we are. That is my gorilla for the beginner. A very simple paint, uh, but looks very beautiful on your tabletop. And that's as far as we are going to go today. So there we are. Um, I, I can't do much more to show you today on this miniature. Um, I think it looks fantastic. Um, this is one of my favourite WizKids miniatures at the minute. I think it's a lovely sculpt. And as a, for a beginner, it's a super, super way to get yourself into the hobby. Um, what I'll be doing, I'll be finishing off the base of course and then I'll do a nice little photo shoot of the miniature. Um, and the same with the Grix. The Grix, um, they are going to have an ink wash, but they'll be dry brushed 
with some lighter greens. But the main show today was the gorilla and how fast and simple you can get a nice little gorilla or ape ready for your tabletop. Well, this is going to be all covered in um, stones anyway. So there we are. That's my little stream. Um, thank you all so much for popping in. It's always a pleasure to see all my lovely goblins. You're all absolutely amazing. And you know I love every single one of you. Um, so my next stream now is what day are we start Sunday? The next stream is on Tuesday. And we shall be back painting our Reaper miniatures. And I'll be finishing off the Ice Trolls. So I'm going to let you all have an absolutely lovely Sunday. I am going to have my beef stew and I will probably be playing Conan for the rest of the afternoon and having a little relax. So loads of love to everybody and I will see you on Tuesday. Take care.